What a beautiful day on this January wintry morning. It's about 50 degrees out, the sun is out, and there's hardly a cloud in the sky. It's gorgeous, and I've got some things I can do in January, and I made a list, and I'm gonna share those with you. Welcome back to Up the Windy Lane. I'm Chrissy, and I have a great January list for you. Okay, just a little list here. I've been reading a book. It kind of goes month by month. I got it while we were on vacation, actually. Not sure why, because, you know, the intent was not to actually read that many books. I got too many on vacation. So, I'm going through it. I figure, you know what, I might as well go through it and use what I can, and uh, starting this year. So, one of them was harvest hardy vegetables. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any vegetables planted. Um, any lettuces or anything like that could maybe that could maybe overwinter or and I didn't get anything planted late so that might be something next year that I could do but it depends on where you live as well I'm in <clears throat> I'm in zone 6b so um, sometimes we have mild winters sometimes we have really cold snaps like this past winter we got down below zero doesn't normally happen around here just ever so often so usually mild I mean we get freezing temperatures but um, I think there are some there are some plants that could survive not just out in the cold but if I had the cold frame up and going or maybe the caterpillar tunnel then I could probably sure harvest all year round at least greens and stuff like that which is something that I would definitely like to do now the next one is something that I'm going to try to do these are my compost bins there I don't really have a system for this I just add what I have and um, the bottom is already composting which I have pulled out some of that but I haven't turned it I don't like do what you're supposed to do with a compost pile so I'm kind of winging it with that one but that is something I'm gonna do today I'm gonna actually get the pitchfork and shovel I'm gonna dig out the bottom and see if there is any manure so that is or compost I should say there's manure in there uh, one of the things you can do in January is you can actually spread manure and compost on empty beds. Now I have lots of empty beds back here, so but you want to use aged manure. I do know that. Um, if you use fresh manure, it's going to be too hot and it could burn your plants, cause disease. So it really needs to be broken down uh, as much as possible. So that is one thing I am going to do today. Now another thing you can actually do is warm up your areas. Uh, warm up your bedding areas with cardboard. They also suggested plastic sheeting or carpet. Um, I try to stay away from those as much as possible. I do have some carpet left over from the pool deck out here that's on kind of keeping the grass down because I'm eventually going to put raised beds out here where all that trash, that poor garden behind me is. But you can warm it up with cardboard. Now cardboard is something that I get from where I work and I save all the cardboard that usually that we get here from packages and such. And I save it. It's actually tossed right over there in the garden. There's some in the caterpillar tunnel and there's some in my greenhouse. So definitely got to put that somewhere. Something else you can do in winter is you can prune your apple and pear trees. Now they say to this is the best time to plant the trees because they're dormant. Um, I've planted them probably all times in the year because that's whenever, whenever they're available at our local Rule King or wherever I find them, I usually plant them then. So sometimes it's actually in the spring and then I think they also have some in the fall as well. But I have a bunch of small trees this year. I used to have some bigger ones. Uh, the, we had goats, more goats they would get out, rip the bark off and killed a lot of my trees. Now, I do have two old ones and older ones. We probably had them for, gosh, I don't know. Actually, they are pretty old. Probably five to seven years or more. Probably more than that, actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, close to 10. Gosh, maybe. Um, I'm gonna show you those two and a good reason why you should prune your trees. But this one is a small one. I don't know what it is because I don't have my garden map out here. But um, you can see maybe that I just pruned this. So basically, um, it'll probably have to be pruned again, but I've been uh, watching some videos. I don't want these trees to get so big that I can't pick the fruit. So I actually trimmed these down pretty good and I don't want any crossing. I don't want any um, limbs going to the middle because that's just going to limit um, sunlight and airflow and it's going to cause disease. So this is one right here that needs to be pruned uh, really, really, really far back because this one over here 
is one that last year broke. It was huge, it was a lot, well, it was probably bigger than this one, but it's way too tall. Like, it had fruit on it, I couldn't reach the fruit. It actually looks like it's got buds coming out, it's got way too many branches on it, it's got way too many going to the inside, it's way too tall, I can't get them all, even with a ladder, I tried. So, that is definitely gonna have to be cleaned up. But if you start them small, then they're really easy to manage. Uh, like these pears that I got and uh, so you can tell like some of these there's going to be branches that are going to be going to the inside and I'll just have to keep an eye on them as uh, you know as they well become less dormant <laughs> as uh, everything starts coming up as it starts budding and uh, probably have to prune throughout maybe the spring and summer and just kind of see what they do especially if I want to keep them small I did not buy dwarf trees but I don't want them huge either all right let's move on to the next thing on the list all right next is check your cages uh, maybe your hoops whatever you might have like fruit cages tomato cages like this one right here I need to fix that I need to get all that off of there while it's dead I need to fix it I need to clean this up and actually may move that because I'm, I'm gonna move I'm not gonna have a trellis right here my trellis is actually gonna go all the way all the way to the other side right here I got a lot of a lot of mess to clean up but that is my plan anyways so just checking irrigation um, I'm gonna check my irrigation so if you have irrigation you can check that I'm just gonna check and make sure you know everything is still connected like it should be like I had it um, I'm gonna check uh, whatever hoops that I have together and check my tomato cages that I have. I love put them over in the garden. I tried to clean up as much as I could in the fall so I wouldn't have as much to clean up right now or right before spring but I'm gonna try to not um, you know wait till the last minute and do everything because that seems to be how I roll around here sometimes. So the plan is to month by month to kind of um, get some things done and get everything ready so that when I want to start seeds next month and I want to put those out the month after uh, some of those cold crops like kohlrabi that I love um, I'll be ready <laughs> all right we're in the greenhouse the next one is something I've never done before and I think I'm gonna try it this year because uh, just to see if maybe that's what is causing some of my um, plants to be stunted or seedlings to be stunted or anything like that so I have a bunch of pots and seed trays in here and some of them still have dirt in them uh, it's sort of organized sort of not and I just have like old mums down here that I probably need to put in the ground maybe too late for those but I just try to plant them and see if they come back um, all these strawberry plants that I pulled out that are dead I just need to compost these and clean everything up. So they say to use, you could use a diluted bleach and water solution. I don't have bleach that I know of. So I'm just gonna use a mild detergent and water. And the plan is to clean everything that I've used, let it dry and put it back up. Will that happen? I'm not sure. <laughs> let me know if you clean your stuff every year. I've, like I said, I've never done this before. So, and it's probably going to be a good idea because some of this stuff is really old. I mean, some of it I need to check because, like, this one has to be put together. Like, the top has to be used because this is cracked, I believe, all the way down in some spots. And if I don't, then it just leaks out water doesn't do its purpose. These are new ones, so they may not have to be cleaned. But I'm curious if you clean all your pots and seed trays before the next year. Now, this is something probably should have done maybe at the end of last year. I don't know but I do have a lot of stuff to clean up in here so that might be a project for today as well as the compost but we're gonna move on to the next thing so the next thing would be buying your seeds for starting in February maybe going through the seeds actually you should probably go through the seeds because that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go through the seeds that I already have and see what I have how many of it I have because I have a lot of seeds in uh, put up and I've saved a lot of seeds and I just really need to go through and see what needs to be used because they aren't they're gonna stay good for a while but they're not gonna stay good forever so I do need to use what I have and not waste that money that I spent on them and not waste well the life of that seed 
So I'm gonna go through my seeds, that's a good option. Go through your seeds if you have them, kind of plan out what you wanna do. Um, I have a worksheet that I will share below as well, maybe not a worksheet, spreadsheet, that I found online that actually helps you with your planting with according to your garden zone and I use it I have it printed out and I use it every year to kind of kind of helps me decide when to start my seeds and when to put them outside what can't be started inside what is better to go outside and vice versa so that is a good option to do go through those seeds make a list of what your family will eat and uh, maybe some stuff that you want to try and then what you don't have go ahead and place your seed orders because we are as of right now almost in the middle of January as I am filming this all right here comes the fun part is writing or drawing up your sewing and planting plan so I have grid paper that I put all of my plants down and I mark them because I won't remember where they are I won't remember what they are just like the fruit trees I probably can't go out there and tell you what those are unless I have my planting plan with me I know what one of them is for sure maybe two I know where the figs are and I know where one of my two of my peach trees are but the other ones mm, I think I know where the apples and the pears are but until they actually produce fruit I probably couldn't tell you so I've got to get more familiar with that that is why I always draw a map of my garden I have a map of uh, the garden around the greenhouse I have a map of around the house where I planted all those plants that I got from rule king last year on clearance that way I know where they're supposed to be coming up at and what they are so um, definitely write or draw your plan up you can use an online tool called growveg.com I think is what it's called um, I have used that a little bit I want to try to get more used to using it I am just really more of a pen and paper gal so I don't know if that's gonna work for me or not but you can print them and you can also do crop rotation and you can put in there like what date you plant something and when it's gonna be done and then you can put in when you want to plant something else so um, succession planting is also available in that as well but you could just make multiple plans on paper which may be what I end up doing so that is um, a few options for that as well all right, I hope you enjoyed that little list of some stuff that I am going to do this year. I think I'm just gonna share as whatever I'm doing, whatever I read that I might do, I'm just gonna share with you, kind of give you some ideas. Um, and uh, if you have ideas, share them below because we could always use them. Uh, but I'm gonna go do that compost. And I'm gonna go check on that. I'm gonna try to get some of these seed uh, trays and pots cleaned. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to go through my seeds. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Be sure to like and subscribe and don't forget to be lovely lights today.